What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the right side of the map in the red color, playing as Odin. His name is Nullus. His opponent today in the blue color, playing as Uranus. His name is Scotty. The map is Watering Hole. This is the best of five for the semifinals. Semifinal number two. For those of you who haven't seen semifinal number one, I recommend going and watching that after you've finished watching this. Anyways, <laughs> a very exciting series here. We're going to be seeing a very interesting opening. I think a lot of players here are expecting to see Hades and nothing but Hades from Nullis. But Nullis is opening up this series with the Odin and Scardi with a surprising pick. Game number one, deciding to go in with the Uranus. The reason why I say this is slightly surprising, if not very surprising, is that the, uh, that the chance of a Hades being picked here from Nullis is so absurdly high that he has to be feeling like he can win Hades with his Uranus, which, I don't know, that's something that I'm yet to believe is a... Is a a real possibility at this point. I'm, I'm more and more starting to believe that if you play Hades in Nullis' style, sorry, yeah, if you play Hades in Nullis' style, that Uranus becomes a very, very difficult to win with God on in certain maps. And this map here would have been perfect. Look at the town center. What the fuck is that on the back? Gold mine. Yum. A little bit of yum. But Nullis here, he goes with the Odin, Scardi with the Uranus. We'll see how things are going to end up going here as Scotty now wandering forward with his Oracle. Generally speaking, you don't want to be leaving your Oracles standing around to get whacked by the Scrailing because you might be wanting to heroize those a little bit later. So generally speaking, I think the best idea for Aranus is to mostly just scout your side of the map with your Oracle and stay away from the Scrailing if you can at all help it as we do see the Temple now coming down for Nullis starting this game off. Fairly nicely, he does find himself uh, killing a gazelle right next to his wood uh, wood cart here, so he can actually share that if he so chooses. But he looks like he's not really thinking about it. Can be a little bit tough to really think about that kind of thing, but it is what it is. But the question is going to be: Now we've got Uranus versus Odin. Scardi obviously has played the Uranus versus Odin matchup a lot. He's going to know that it can be a little bit difficult. But what sort of an opening is he going to go for? Scardi is a more traditional Aranos player, so to speak. He doesn't... I, I don't see him doing the the double military academy openings. I don't see him doing the villager cut strategy. I just see him playing very, very calm, very, very focused Aranos with the Mermillo, with the Terma, with the Macro, and everything that comes with it. We'll see if that's exactly what he's going to go for, if he's, or if he does have something more uh, particular in store for us but the question then comes Nullis he's Odin I haven't seen a whole lot of it I know he can play Odin I've se I have seen him play it with success but is he just going to go straight for the Ulfsark Lone Wanderer Ulfsark or does he have something a little bit more technical like Throat Thorn Axeman Raiding Cavalry type compositions come to mind uh, as something that might be a possibility here for Nullis. We'll have to wait and see. House is coming down at the back of his base. Hursa popping out. Relics on the map that have been uncovered. The Staff of Dionysus. Not going to be any help to the Aranos player, unfortunately, due to the uh, Aranos players not having any carry capacity. But could go for some help for, for Nullis here in this game as the Ravens are scouting around trying to find where the other Relic is. We are yet to see it, however, though. As the wall's coming up here for Nullis, just defending his own base. He's got plenty of resources in his main base. He's not going to have to worry about this anytime soon either. As the villagers finish those gazelle. I love that. That shift clicking was beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who didn't realize, what he did then was he individually clicked on each of those gazelle so that once the... Not the, each of those gazelle. Each of those gatherers right-clicked on the gazelle, hold, held shift onto the hippopotamus on every single one of those villages individually to make that happen. If you don't do it individually, the villagers will wait on the ox cart until everyone has hit the ox cart. 
and that can cause a lot of idle time. But instead of doing that, he does it all individually and they go perfectly hand in hand. As we do see Nullis getting himself hand axe and pickaxe really, really early. This is super unorthodox for Norse players. You don't see this very often. Uh, Scardy, on the other hand, here, he's got himself pickaxe. I don't see a hand axe coming through for the time being. And he is indeed just simply going. Terma, Mermillo, no Promethean just yet. Is he going to make himself a Valor here on just the Ulsark? As the yeah he does a little bit of a a little bit of a trick there from Scardi though it probably could have hit the the terma that was moving but the trick is if you move units the the valor will go onto the units that are moving if the units are standing still they won't get hit by the valor that's the trick so Scardi definitely wanted to get himself those here in Mamela there and he got all three of them as we're now starting to see her sir throw an axeman and raiding cavalry coming through for Nullet so like I said. I was interested. Are we going to see something a little bit more technical from Nullis? And we are indeed seeing the technicalities here coming through for Nullis. He's not going for the off Sark spam. He's just playing it safe defensively in what seems to be Nullis' Hades style, but instead with Odin. And we'll see how things are going to go. You have to remember the hand axe and pickaxe were researched. So that's a lot more resources that are going to be coming in, but it does take a little while for those to pay off. Uh, as he pulls back into his main base. He does have himself seven villages on the wood, so that'll be a big, big help for him as the army is starting to crash forward here for Scardi. The throw on Axeman in position to start getting a little bit of damage done as the reigning cavalry pushing those units back. Nullis is playing it nice and safe here. Same two for Scardi. Taking a little bit of damage to try and break down that wall, but Nullis here, he's not going to want to be pushing too far out with the, with the fears of potentially Shockwave coming through as... I wonder if Scotty is going to be knowing at this point exactly what Nullis has done here, and if he if he's going to be making sort of a different uh, a different kind of decision based on that. Because sometimes sometimes just pushing into your Norse opponent's base is just not as easy as you think it would be. And at this point here, Nullis just kind of defending. He needs to retreat off this hippopotamus, but he's just waiting for the for the hippopotamus to finish, and then he can just leave back onto this place here. He's got four gazelle remaining there as the villagers are going to be retreating away there is still a shockwave wouldn't be a bad idea to utilize that as the army pushes forward shockwave being utilized there onto the throne axeman as the army going to be retreating back Nullis can take this fight ever so slightly but the hero mamillo dumping straight onto those throne axemen as the term are pushing forward to snipe those down great micro from scardi here as Nullis trying to fight this one off here generally speaking fighting the Atlantean player in the early game, it's not the best way to play with Odin, but it looks like it's working out for Nullis at this point as uh, the population differential is still roughly the same. And Scardi will be thinking about retreating there as Nullis does get that win. However, the units, they're very battered, they're very beaten up, but Odin gets that health regen to come through very, very fast here. I'm not sure if this is the, tr the, the case or not, the truth or not, but I... Generally, with the healing in Age of Mythology, if your units are standing still, they get healed a little bit faster. I think it's the truth for moving and fighting units, but I'm not 100% sure. If it is the truth, then it's definitely worthwhile to just stay still. As we do see the army of Scardi saying, you know what, screw it, I'm coming around the other side. As he continues to put pressure on this position here, the Raven, or not the Raven, but the Oracle here. I thought that was a Raven for some reason. The Raiders do spot those units coming through. The Villagers here moving forward as well. Scardi does notice this. Nullis gets caught out of position really, really badly there. For some reason, those Villagers here moving around the side. Instead, around this way, they get caught out pretty badly as the army now coming back to push forward. Two villagers are down as Nullis is going to push in onto this hunt here as best as he can. Nullis' game plan at this point is simply get Heroic Age, utilize Frost onto the Atlantean army, pick up that Atlantean army as best as he can, and then find a victory with the uh, with the Battler upgrade. He's got back gold mines. He's got back hunt. He's got back everything, but he still needs to pump units out and defend as the army of... Uh, Scardi pushing into the main base. You're going to be losing a little bit of, uh, of army there for that, for that movement. As you do see the units now pushing forward here. And the army coming through for Scardi to raid this position here. Looks like Nullis, he's not quite defended on every position as, he, as Scardi has snuck around to pick off more villages here. We see a second Townsend and now coming up for Scardi as the army on the front here getting caught out as well. Everyone seemingly taking losses 
uh, on every single position here as Scardy hits a three-pronged attack. The retreat is now on for Scardy to get out of here without taking too much return fire. Manolis, he's still got to be careful on this front here as the Valkyrie pushes forward. Valor comes through. Manolis does pull back into his main base here. We do see an armory coming up. Vanellis, he's defended on this position. Lots of villagers have gone down, though. Vanellis, Scardi at 15 citizen now. The equivalent of roughly 45 Norse villagers in terms of income. Significantly far in front here. Obviously, that is very natural for the Norse player, to, uh, for the Atlantean player to be in front in terms of villager account. But still very, very scary here for Scardi. As his town center is coming up, he's got the damage done, but he still has to deal with this ridiculously strong map of Nullis. As the army's still trying to sneak through, but now Nullis is in position. He sees what's happening. And Scotty says, all right, all right. I tried it once. I thought I'd try it again, but you, you're there now. So he pulls away. We do see Scotty pulling back onto this position. He's got himself some Promethe and everything else. The army all looking like it wants to just push around onto that side. As we do see the Oracle getting taken out. Scotty could now sneak through on the other way here if he so chooses. As Nellis is now full population. Part, it kind of looks like he's trying to grab this town center. But if he does, he most likely won't have the food to get next age. And he might be stuck in the classical age as he's still trying to scout around. The army now coming through here. Can Scardi win this fight? Does he have a shockwave here or not is the big question. As Nullis pulls back, he's throwing Axeman ever so slightly in that fight to stay away from the Terma. But the throwing Axeman here, they're not going to be enough to hold. I don't think so as the, uh, the Terma are able to come in and just destroy everything here as the Terma retreat. Oh, the Toxodotes. Toxodes? Throw an action? Whatever they're called. Retreating away here as the reigning cavalry pushing forward for Nullis. Nullis trying to find some sort of a fight here as we do see the shockwave getting dropped down as uh, as Scardi wants to pick up everything he possibly can. Meanwhile, uh, Mamillo Hero trying to chase down the Valkyrie as the heroes of Scardi are able to deal with that nicely. But meanwhile, on the main base here, Nullis is getting some good trades on the front as he's decided to move forward rather than retreat backwards here. This is a risky maneuver. We'll see if it works out for him as more Thrawn Axemen are coming forward here. The Raiders need to be taking down those Terma. He does manage to get one Raider onto this, but is it too little too late? As all the Thrawn Axemen do end up falling there. Meanwhile, Forest Fire getting dropped down onto this position. The Armory is up for Scardi, but he has lost a lot in terms of resources here as he retreats away. The mana getting taken down. Three town centers about to be up here for Scardi. Farms coming up as well as on this position, the Oranos units do end up all falling here. And Scardi is now under attack in the main base. Scardi's still sitting with full population. He has lost his mana, but he doesn't matter because he's still pumping units as fast as he possibly can. The army of Nullis is still pushing forward here as his army is very, very strong as Scardi just cannot hold for the time being only three military buildings, but four military buildings if you count the temple building those Promethean. So he should be able to pop back up pretty fast here as the town center just about to be up and Nullis has to retreat back. Nullis is kind of on a timer now as three town center Atlantean, one town center Norse. It's not going to be the easiest fight to take here. Or to continue, he needs to figure something out as more Promethean moving forward. The hero, Terma, getting created to try and push Nullis back as Nullis does decide to retreat there into that position. The villagers are now stuck forward onto the hunt in the main position, on the main center of the map there as the raiding cavalry spots and villagers hunting Rhino in the middle of nowhere. There's more army coming through for Nullis to push off of the, push off of the hunt here as they do dive into the manor. It's the citizen retreating away. We do see one more citizen falling here. We do see the citizen getting taken out on this position. Throw an axeman. Starting to take those units out as well. Is the mana going to be getting cleaned up? Scardi tries to push back in, but Scardi here, 121 population, kind of needs to wait for that 145 population to engage here. But he is trying to push in. Those throwing axemen are just going to go to town on the medium Amillo for the time being here. As Scardi does realize that, he's going to be retreating back here. 
Nullis, he's got an eye on both of these town centers, but still not trying to put them up here just yet. Scardi pulling back. We'll be able to finish off that Shield Maiden Valkyrie very, very quickly there. Nice play from Scardi. As he's now sitting at 111 population. Nullis' army is still very, very strong. His population is much, much lower than Scardi's in terms of the economy. So his army is incredibly strong as well as the micro is still continuing here for, uh, for Nullis beautifully dodging those projectiles of those hero Terma. Scardi pulls back into the main base. He needs to get the uh, the production going. He needs to get up to full population. He's got the three town centers, but getting three town centers does slow him down considerably. Another option would be to get himself some catapulty out to, to try and deal with those raiders just that little bit easier as the army coming back over here to take out some villages on this position. The longer this goes on, the closer guy he gets to getting some population to deal with this. Uh, but I guess at this point, Nullis knows he shouldn't care too much. Nice marker here from Scotty, keeping his units alive. Plow coming through here for Scotty. It might not be a bad idea for Scotty to actually cut villager production completely here. As he does push through onto this position. Another citizen falling here. As the hero Termot retreating away. We do see Scotty pushing forward with his own Termot straight, straight onto those Throwing Axemen there. But technically speaking, the Throwing Axemen win this fight with enough of them. As both players dropping down in population. As the term out heroes do manage to take out the uh, the Valkyrie there and good garrison micro yet again there from Scardi as now Nullis has to retreat back. And now that Scardi has won that fight, Nullis is down in population. The economic advantage that Scardi has constructed here is going to be a difficult one to deal with. As more units are pushing through here for Nullis to try and hold on. As all the units pumping out, we will be seeing one raiding cavalry going down, two throwing axemen. Going down, and Scardi getting closer and closer to that full population. Look, check out the town centers. He has basically cut citizen, or had cut citizen there, it seems, as he is now 128, 130 population. Nullis at 95 population as the army swinging around here, and Nullis just continuing to take the fight to the Uranos here. And it's simply just not working out that well, as we do see Shield Maiden Valkyrie going down here. More Shield Maiden Valkyrie coming through, and Scardi is just like, I'm just going to keep on heroizing my Terma at this point, as he does need to think about retreating, though. Uh, maybe not. Nullis is at 88 population. The only thing he's got here that's scary are those Shield Maiden Valkyries. And it does look like Scardi has to retreat now, and I mean, he's still, Scardi is still spending his resources nicely. It's not like he needs more production at this point, but one thing that just wouldn't go astray. <laughs> Just a little bit more resources in the bank for Scardi. A little bit more, uh, a little bit less on the economy. Like choosing when to build villages and when not to build villages. Generally, not that big of a big of a question you need to ask. It's always going to be build villages. But at this point now, Scardi has hit his twenty-five villages. He's twenty-five citizen. Can't build any more unless he's got hero citizen somewhere, which I don't see them anywhere. Yeah, he's got no hero citizen for whatever reason. He must have lost some. So he's at full citizen, which means he's going to have a lot more income to just put straight into military. And now he's at full population, scouting around with those units, trying to take out dwarves and everything. The dwarves now moving on to this middle gold mine. This is where things get very, very tough for the Norse player when they're on to an exposed gold mine in the classical age. You do see a town center coming up here for Nullis finally. So he's desperately trying to hold on here. Hero term is still getting created to deal with the, ter uh, with the Valkyrie problem that scardi has got. There's the Raiding Cavalry coming through here yet again. The Mamillo coming in onto this position as the Terma trying to deal with all those thrown Axemen as best as he can. The Armory upgrades are still non-existent for both of these players here as well. But Scardi at full population, 147 population now as well as if he converts the Terma to heroes, he can push above that population ever so slightly. As the Terma here, they simply have to just continue microing correctly. As we do see some good micro there from uh, Nullis to pull away, but not fast enough as the army numbers of Scardi are starting to overwhelm Nullis as he retreats away. 90 population of 115. These dwarves in the middle of this fight here. We'll see if Nullis can just distract away from them. Nope, Scardi already knows there will, there will be no distracting for the time being here. But the town center at the top still coming up. Nullis can retreat away. There is a gold mine up here that he can sort of run to, but he's not going to be wanting to take that kind of a sacrifice to his economy in this game here. 
As the Valkyrie have now found some villagers here, but with the hero Terma chasing this down, Scotty can very simply just rebuild that villager, those lost villagers here, but it does look like Scotty is taking a pretty big hit to the economy, while so too is Nullis. Nullis is now two town centers here, desperately trying to hold on. The dwarves have shanked as hard as they can shank, as another ox guard already on the way here for Nullis. He's on top of that, as those medium Mamilla are going to be pulling back home here. As the Valkyrie searching around, we will be seeing the Terma heroes coming in onto this position to try and prevent those Shield Maiden Valkyries from getting the damage done. There's no manage in the middle of the map here for Skadi. And I mean, in all honesty, the same problem exists for Nullis, uh, for Skadi, that exists for Nullis. That problem is the middle gold is kind of everything. There's gold mines on both of these top sides that both players kind of know about, but they just both want to be in the center of the map, getting as much gold as they possibly can. Skadi here has only got himself pickaxe. As the army coming back onto this position, Nullis at 102 population here. The Terma trying to get as much damage done as they possibly can. Skadi has dropped down now to 125 population. Nullis has also dropped down to 100 population, but he's going to be retreating back as those Valkyrie are still overwhelming here. I'm surprised to see Skadi not building the Promethean out. After all is said and done, these sorts of fights here, you don't see them very often in this, uh, in this kind of Atlantean mirror. Or not Mira, Atlantean Norse War. Generally speaking, the, the Heroic Age is very, very popular as the, as the village is retreating off of this uh, Rhino here. This could move up to that top gold mine there if he so chooses. Nelson's has got lots of wood in the bank here as well. Still not getting uh, that third town center up just yet. More... Longhouses wouldn't go astray here for Nullis either, as the army still crashing through onto this position. Those hero Terma doing a lot of very, very good damage here to take out the Shield Men Valkyrie, but they are becoming very, very clutch in this game. Ascardi does manage to chase that Valkyrie away, but good micro there from uh, from Nullis as the Valkyrie now can start going after villagers again. We do see one hero. Uh, term, a couple more hero term are going to come up and deal with that as Nullis does get pushed back yet again. The dwarves here still mining that gold on this position. 3,000 gold remaining. Nullis with plenty of resources in the bank, but he needs to be spending them here. And meanwhile, villagers getting pushed off of the hunt. There are, oh, well, there is a little bit of hunt here with the crown crane and the crocodile that is relatively safe for Nullis as the army coming back onto this position. Scotty's still sitting at full, uh, full population here. As the army pushes through, Mamillo taking out those dwarves here. Really, really nice. The, the Terma coming through as well. More Terma coming in onto this position. The Mamillo pushing through here. And it looks like Nullis is pushed off of this gold mine. He's got no gold left in the bank at the moment. 124 gold left in the bank as the ox card does get taken down. More dwarves getting killed off. There's still 55 villages here for Nullis. So losing all these dwarves isn't the biggest problem. Just the gold mine going uh, down here is a bit of an issue that he's going to have to deal with. But Skadi is staying at a very, very strong 144 population here. And Nullis is falling in terms of his own population. He's got what looks to be no farm setup. He's finally starting some farms on this position. No farm setup. Another ox cart coming back onto this position. There's more throwing axemen coming through, but just all the units are just mo uh, are just spamming into this position. And Nullis cannot hold on any longer as he taps out, types GG. Scotty manages to claim the long classical fight here. That was insane. I've never seen a Norse player hold that long in the classical age. The, the, there's a reason for it because just like the Atlantean army, the spam just keeps on coming. It keeps hitting you. Take a look at the post game. This is this will give you the idea of how big the gap in resources ends up being. I mean, let's just let's just call it at the at the twenty minute mark before things started getting so absurdly insane. Thirty minute, uh, thirty thousand at nineteen minutes down here at nineteen twenty twenty. 4,500, so an entire 5,500 resources difference. If you calculate that in terms of units, uh, 5,000 plus 500, you're looking at about 55 units, roughly, give or take, maybe, maybe 60 units, give or take difference. You have to be in front in terms of units killed to be equal to Atlantean in terms of that sort of fighting with that sort of a difference in economy. And now it's only 20 units in front, simply just not enough here, ladies and gentlemen. Great game here from Scotty to start things off. It's a best of five. If you guys are enjoying it, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.